What's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. Today we got the Madden 22 All Access Week 2 Dynamic Game Day Deep Dive. So last week, guys, week one we had the franchise stuff. This week we have the game day. This is more like about gameplay, right? This is going to be gameplay oriented, which is important because this goes across all game modes. You know, uh, regs, exhibition, franchise, um, you know, like, uh, what's it called? Face of the franchise, and of course, months. So this is going to be important for everyone to watch. So stay tuned, listen close. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I will get to those, of course, throughout the day as you guys do post them. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell, give this video a big thumbs up, guys. And of course, like I said, if you have questions, make sure to ask them down below. But let's get into this. So we have a lot to go over because this is going to be a pretty big update now. I do understand. I want you guys to understand this. They always have a good way of spinning words to make things sound crazier than they are. Like when they introduce like aggressive catching or they introduce like any of these new things, they make it sound like it's the next coming of like Jesus. And then you play the game and it's like, so it's still a juke. But here they call it earth shattering jukes that are more realistic but it's, it's just a juke and sometimes they're even slower but nonetheless guys there is a lot in this video to go over and a lot of new stuff now of course don't base what you see here and compare it to the beta right because that's what people are going to do they're going to see all this stuff and be like okay well in the beta so these are the jukes no the beta is a broken down lower powered engine um pre bug testing version of what the game actually is going to be once they release their final patches and they adjust the speed so understand that a lot of the stuff you're not even seeing in the beta the beta is a like a 40 percent version of what you're actually gonna probably end up playing like it's really gonna be a big difference and if even if the game speed stays the same a lot of other things will be updated but let's get into this guy so first just an in-game in uh, screenshot i took of you know king Allen catching it we have dynamic game day components by the way these features are only available on xbox series x and playstation 5 so if you do still have an xbox x or an xbox one or any of those you are going to be limited to the current gen version of the game, which may not be a bad thing because this year we actually did prefer the current gen version of the game. Dynamic game day components. We have game day atmosphere, game day momentum, and next gen stats driven AI. So atmosphere is going to be like the stadium, you know, loud fans, heat, all that stuff. And then game day momentum is going to be the momentum bar on top. And then next gen stats star driven AI, which is actually kind of cool if it works. This makes it so that teams, because CPU teams play based on the way they actually play. So if you guys know, if you guys play franchise or you play against the CPU ever, you know that you play the Giants, right? And what do the Giants do in real life? They run with Saquon. They check down to Saquon. They don't do like the crate when Eli was there, right? Um, but then you play the Giants and they're making short reads all game. And Saquon's doing power runs and not outside runs or, you know, none of the above, right? Or you play the Cowboys. And Zeke only has 15 or, you know, only like 10 rushes or 12 rushes and Dax passing slants all game. It's always feels like every week it's the same thing. They make the quick read because they're CPU. They don't miss it. This is supposed to make it so that the AI plays like they do in real life. So if you're going against the charge of Justin Herbert, he's letting that rock sling to Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Keenan Allen's making these precise cuts. You play the Cowboys. They're going to be run heavy. Um, you know, well, you know, they, that's changed as of recently. But you know what I mean? You play the Giants. They'll take a lot of safe stuff to save one. You play the Broncos, and they play the way the Broncos play. And it's going to be based on their actual stats. And as the team starts to update, where, like, maybe Zeke retires in your 60 or 70 franchise sim, and now they have, like, CD and all these great receivers there, then they'll start playing to more of a passing-heavy team. But that's besides the point. You know, if, if Dak has a really good throw deep, he'll be able to be more deep offense. If he's a bad throw deep, to play it shorter. It's going to be more realistic, so that's pretty cool. At least it's supposed to be. Um, we have the game day atmosphere, updated broadcast package. So that's going to be how they broadcast it, like, after a long touchdown, it'll show like maybe the, the miles per hour you hit, who had the highest one for the year. It'll show the catch radius. It'll show the, the spot, you know, all like the stuff they do in real life. That's pretty cool. Super fans. So I'm assuming those are like the guys with the face paint and they're all dressed up. New crowd animations, which is whatever. I don't really care for that. Momentum driven sideline reactions. Okay, so I guess that's like when the momentum's up and Odell goes and kicks the net, you know, kind of one of those things. That's my assumption. And new celebrations. That's not really that important to me. Um, here you go see the momentum bar if you don't know what that is top that's going to be what this help that's going to shift a lot of games and there's always been momentum in madden i don't care what anyone says you guys know that game in mud or regs when you're playing and you have a guy by his ass like you know you're gonna win this game and then you they, they get a fumble on you or something and you've been killing them on offense all game and they, they force a fumble and now suddenly they're getting one play touchdowns and every time on offense you just can't you fumble again you throw a pick your pass goes incomplete you can just tell the momentum swung right the game definitely always had momentum based algorithm in the game all they're doing now is showing it on the top of the screen 
as well as going ahead and adding a few effects for it as well um here we go so these are called m factors which is just momentum momentum factors so every stadium has their own such as uh eagles is linked in while winning ho while winning home gains more momentum and away gains less so these are all of them if you guys want to take a uh, pause real quick i'm not going to go through all of them for my giants we do have turf war and so do the jets of course they say this, they share the same stadium but these are all of them so if you if your favorite team so you want to see that though that is your m factor for your home stadium so just screenshot that then of course guys here you go so the giants scored a touchdown their momentum shoots up the eagles actually lose um you know their end of the momentum it comes back to the giant side and now giants have prediction problems enabled hides the ball spot indicator for the home team so that's pretty cool as well uh seattle seahawks this is one of theirs the 12s away team has distorted play art on third and fourth down seattle is going to be ridiculously annoying to play because third and fourth down right that's when all that's when all the marbles are there right all the marbles are in the basket you gotta go for it right um you know first down you don't need to get 10 yards two yards works a loss of one works a gain of five works on third down especially in some leagues where you have to punt on fourth down or if you're playing you know your punter you have to get you have to convert that third down and this is what's going to look like on third and fourth down that is going to be hard and that's because uh seattle seahawks uh their stadium is infamous for actually having a very loud stadium that you can hear from blocks away and they shake the stadium uh let's see so windy conditions in chicago make kicking a field goal even more difficult so that bar is going to keep swaying like 15 mile per hour winds which is crazy so this year what it did was when there was wind your bar stayed steady and you just have to adjust it to the right and you could adjust that to 15 to go like this and come back in this time around the bars like this swaying that's gonna definitely be hard in chicago uh, Denver, this guy right here. So you see rugs. He was like gasping for air because they're in the mile high city where it's harder to breathe. And of course, it might not affect the Broncos as much because of course they play there. So they get used to it. It's always the away teams that struggle more up there. And then let's see. So that's like the next gen presentation, like completed air distance, 70 yards to Tyree Kill. Now we have player tendencies. So this is what I was talking about. So they wanted to feel like, and I understand now, this is actually a big reason why I stopped playing. All, I, play, I only play online franchise. Why I stopped playing offline my career or franchise was for this reason only after like two or three games like it's really fun and then you're like it's the same thing you come out you drop your 500 yards you break all the records and then it kind of gets boring because like the other team just can't compete with you even on all madden you're still just not competing and i wouldn't mind winning if every game felt different but exactly like they said in the thing i load up into these games and they all come out they do the same exact thing they run the same exact way they pass the same exact way they play defense the same exact way this is going to make it so that you know uh, let's see quarterback decision making under pressure because that's the other thing right when you play in franchise, as soon as you you can't, it's one of the hardest things to do in franchise is sack the QB, not in a blitz, like a regular, uh, like uh, a four man rush sack, which happens a lot in online. It's almost impossible because the second they feel pressure, they'll just uh, they'll take a quick read or throw it away. This one's going to make it so, like, you know, Herbert may be more aggressive under pressure, but Holmes may make things happen, right? Quarterback passing aggressiveness is important because they are not aggressive. The CPU is like playing, have you ever played chess and you versus CPU? and literally every move you do they make like the perfect move back that's how it feels like when you play franchise again you're still gonna win because again they, they um they're not aggressive so eventually they're gonna start to punt a lot because you have to stop them but it's like you go to sack them they find the quick read you go to do this they throw it away it's like they always make the right decision but the issue is in football the right decision isn't always going to win you the game because the right decision is going to be take the check down three times in a row as long as i make the tackle or hit stick him i keep him behind the line and they punt it and then they won't go for it either uh, ball carry tendencies around breaking or evading tackles. That's pretty cool. Quarterback time to throw. Quarterback scramble frequency and more. Player movement updates. So there's max effort animations for all players while running at top speed. So I guess that's pretty cool as well. So when you're running at that full top sprint, like in this three guys chasing you, you just you gash them up the middle. You're gonna look like you're really aggressively running. More responsiveness control for quarterbacks to and from scramble. Yeah, that that's a big deal. I, I hope they do adjust the quarterback scramble because it shouldn't. Like I think that pretty much means you don't need a skate bar. So I'm reading that right. Because it is super frustrating um, that you don't have a like Kyler Murray. Like I had a franchise this year, a current gen franchise. I had Kyler Murray, and I accidentally up checked his uh, changed his abilities real quick, and I went back, and they didn't let you get a skate artist on him again because it glitched. It is like glitched, so like it has to be in the fifth slot. So if you had a guy that had it in the first slot, you lose it. Point is, Kyler Murray was obese; he could not run. Suddenly, he went from one of the fastest, most dynamic quarterbacks in the league to suddenly being a pocket passer because he could not run. Uh, I click RT, and it takes like a second or two for him to finally wind up, and he would get sacked by then. They need to fix that. Now, yes, Baker Mayfield maybe should require a skate artist to run. Um, but Josh Allen, who's at 86 speed, Kyler Murray at 91, Lamar at 96, that's just, that's just dumb. Honestly, a skate artist should be taken out of the game. If you have a fast quarterback, you should be able to run. That is it. Like, it's, like that, that's what I'm saying. Ability should only be in here, which, again, is kind of off topic. Should only be in the game to 
add to a player, right? So Odell Beckham Jr. is amazing, but if you have the one-handed catch ability on him, let's just say, he has an increased chance to make one-handed catches. It shouldn't be, if I put a skate bar on Lamar Jackson, he can run. If I don't, he can't run. It shouldn't be, my my uh, Christian McCaffrey is 99 juke, 99 spin, 99 change of direction. But if he doesn't have change, if he doesn't have human joystick or evasive or jukebox, he can't juke, he can't spin, and he can't change direction without getting that stupid stuck animation where you change directions. So that is that is what they need to fix. But I hope that's what they kind of mean by that a little bit. Like maybe they're gonna go away from all the abilities that enable things to happen and make things more responsive naturally. Uh, signature releases and cuts for receivers and route running. More control and turning up field, which I did notice. I always hated this in, in Madden. When you're like, so you're running like, a, let's say a slant, right? You're on a slant, you have a slight lead on the cornerback, you catch it, and when you want to turn a field, they do like that slow animation, They run, or you run out of bounds. Sometimes you can't control the player for like a second after the catch. This one's going to be like, so you go like this, and they turn a field. So it's like this, they catch it, and they turn right up. It was pretty responsive. If you didn't watch it, I would definitely recommend watching this. Contextual intellection and tackling, touch player down, sideline tackles, early huddle, more. So I guess that just means like you know when a player drops, they'll run and make sure to touch him down instead of how they stupidly run around him. You have to like control and run into them. Sideline tackle, so when they're at the sideline, they just grab him and push him out instead of like the stupid stuff where you get like hit sticks at the sideline or you completely whiff or they can't hold on to him. But yeah, that's about it for the video, guys. This does wrap up everything from today's uh, all access drop. Hopefully, this did give you guys more insight on Madden 22. If you have any questions, I will be more easy. I can easily thoroughly inform you guys on that in the comments or over on Twitter. You can DM me over there. But that's about it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure to subscribe and turn that noti bell. I'm out. Peace.